Hello everyone, happy First Chapter Friday. Today, you're going to learn How to Be Popular by Meg Cabot, who is the writer of Princess Diaries, that very famous series turned into a TV, I mean a movie. So, here we go. Popular, adjective, widely liked or appreciated, liked by acquaintances, sought after for company, Popularity. We all want it. Why? Because being popular means being liked, and everyone wants to be liked. Sadly, however, not all of us are. What do popular people have in common that make them so popular? They all have a friendly way about them, an eagerness to pitch in and help get the job done, an interest in everything that goes on at work or school, a look that is fresh and neat. These aren't traits popular people were born with. They are cultivated. The characteristics that make them so popular, and you can too, by following the tips in this book. Hmm, interesting. Chapter one, T minus two days and counting. Saturday, August 26, 7 p.m. I should have known from the way the woman kept looking at my name tag that she was going to ask. Steph Landry, she said as she pulled out her wallet. Now, how do I know that name? Gosh, ma'am, I said, I don't know, except even though I had never seen this woman before in my whole life, I had a pretty good idea how she might have heard of me. I know, the woman said snapping her fingers, then pointing at me. You're on the Bloomville High School women's soccer team. No, ma'am, I said to her, I'm not. You weren't on the court for the Green County Fair Queen, were you? But before you could tell, even as the words were coming out of her mouth, she knew she was wrong again. I don't have Indiana County Fair Queen hair, i.e. my hair is short, not long, brown, not blonde, and curly, not straight. Nor do I have an Indiana County Fair queen body, i.e. I'm kind of on the short side, and if I don't exercise regularly, my butt kind of expands. Obviously, I do what I can with what God gave me, but I won't be landing on America's next top model anytime soon, or much less the quarter of any fair queen, if you know what I mean. No, ma'am, I said. The thing is, I really didn't want to get into it with her. Who would? But she wouldn't let it go. Goodness, I just know I know your name from somewhere, the woman said, handing me her credit card to pay for her purchases. You sure I didn't read about you in the paper? I'm pretty sure, ma'am, I said. God, that would be just what I need for the whole thing to have been shown up in the paper. Fortunately, though, I haven't been in the paper since my birth announcement. Why would I? I'm not particularly talented, musical, or otherwise. And while I'm in mostly AP classes, that's not because I'm an honor student or anything. That's just because if you grow up in Greene County, knowing that lemon joy goes in your dishwasher and not your iced tea, you get put into AP classes. It's actually sort of surprising how many people in Greene County make that mistake. With the Lemon Joy, I mean. According to my friend Jason's dad, who's the doctor over at Bloomfield Hospital. It's probably, I said to the woman, as I ran her credit card through the scanner, because my parents own this store. Which I know doesn't sound like much, but Courthouse Square Books is the only independently owned bookstore in Bloomville if you don't include Doc Sawyer's adult books and over by the overpass, which I don't. No, the woman said, shaking her head. That's not it either. I could understand her frustration. What's especially upsetting about it, if you think about it, which I try not to except when things like this happen, is that Lauren and I, up until the end of fifth grade, had been friends. Not close friends, maybe, it's hard to be close friends with the most popular girl in school since she's got such a busy social calendar. But certainly close enough that she went over to my house. Well, okay, once, and she didn't exactly have the best time. I blame my father, 
who was baking a batch of homemade granola at the time. The smell of burnt oatmeal was kind of overpowering. And I'd been over to hers just once. Her mom had been away getting her nails done, but her dad been at home and had knocked on Lauren's door to say that explosion noises that I was making during our game of Navy Seal Barbie were a little too loud. Also, he had never even heard of Navy Seal Barbie and wanted to know what was so wrong with playing quiet nurse Barbie. Well, I said to the customer, maybe I just, you know, have one of those names that sounds familiar. Yeah. Wonder why Lauren's the one who coined the term don't pull a Steph Landry out of revenge. It's amazing how fast it caught on to. Now, if anyone in school does anything remotely crackheaded or dorky, people are all, don't pull a staff, or that was such a staff, or don't be such a staff. And I'm the staff they're talking about. Nice. Maybe, maybe that's it, the woman said doubtfully. Gosh, this is going to bug me all night. I just need to know. Her credit card was approved. I tore off the slip for her to sign and started bagging her purchases. Maybe I could tell her that the reason she might know me is because of my grandfather. Why not? He's currently one of the most talked about and richest men in southern Indiana ever since he sold some farmland he owned along the proposed route of the new I-69 connecting Mexico to Canada via the highway corridor through Indiana and amongst other states for the construction of the Super Sav Mart which opened last weekend, which means he's been in the local paper a lot, especially since he spent a chunk of his money building an observatory that he plans to donate to the city. Because every small town in southern Indiana needs to have an observatory. <laughs> Not. It also means that my mother isn't speaking to him because of the Super Sav Mart, with its reduced prices, is probably going to put all the shops along the square, including the courthouse square books, out of business. But I knew the customer would never fall for it. Grandpa's last name isn't even the same as mine. He was afflicted from birth with the unfortunate moniker of Emil Cazulis, although he's done pretty well for himself despite this handicap. I was just going to have to face the fact that, just like the red super big gulp that wouldn't come out of Lauren's white denim D and G skirt, even though my dad tried, he used shout and everything, and when it didn't work, finally we went out and got her a brand new skirt, that my name was going to be forever stained on people's memories, and not in a good way. Oh well, the lady said, taking her bags and her receipt. I guess it's just one of those things. I guess it is, I said to her, not without some relief, because she was finally leaving. But my relief turned out to be short-lived, because a second later, the bells over the front door to the shop tinkled, and Lauren Moffat herself, wearing the same white Lily Pulitzer low-rise capris that I tried on at the mall the other day, but had been unable to purchase due to the fact that they cost the equivalent of 25 hours of work behind the cash register at the Courthouse Square Books, was coming into the store holding a tasty delight from the penguin and going, Mom, would you hurry up? I've been waiting for you for like ever. And I realized belatedly who I'd been talking to. Whatever. I can't be expected to read the name on every credit card someone hands me. Besides, there are like a hundred of Moffats here in Bloomville. Oh, Lauren, you'll know, Mrs. Moffat said to her daughter. How do I know the name Steph Landry? Um, maybe because she's the one who spilled that big red super big gulp on my white D&G skirt in front of everyone in the calf. On that day in sixth grade, Lauren replied with a snort. And she's never forgiven me for it, much less let anyone forget about it. Mrs. Moffat flung a horrified look at me over the padded shoulder of her Quacker Factory sweater set. Oh, she said, dear, Lauren, I... Which is when Lauren finally noticed me standing behind the cash register. God, Mom! 
she said, giggling, as she pushed open the door to slip back out into the evening heat. Way to pull a Steph Landry! And then there's this little in between the chapters. And this is coming from a book that is going to be used by our hero in order to help her get over the Steph Landry thing and become popular. So this is, like I said, an insert from the book. Let's begin by determining your level of popularity or lack thereof. Ask yourself how others in your social sphere perceive you. Do they know who you are? If so, how do they treat you? Do they make rude remarks about you behind your back or to your face? Do they ignore you? Do others include you in their outings and activities, including you to social events or occasions? Judging by the behavior of others around you, you should be able to tell whether you are liked, merely tolerated, or totally unpopular. If you are merely tolerated or totally unpopular, it is time to take action. And the book that is going to be given to Steph is going to tell her just how to do that. To find out more, pick up the book yourself and finish it. Have a great Friday.